Hello, everybody. Welcome to NIDA. My name is Julie Lynch, and I'm the director for the Centre for Design Practices. If I can all ask you to turn your screens and mics off until the end when we will actually answer some questions. So, as I said, I'm the director for the Centre for Design Practices, and this centre teaches design for performance, costume making and supervision, properties and objects, and scenic construction and technologies. But today I'm going to be focusing on the BFA Design for Performance course. But before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognize their continuing connection to land, water and culture and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So just to give you a little bit of an idea of how this morning's session is going to run, I'm going to share a 15 minute PowerPoint presentation where I'll take you through the three years of the VFA course. We're then having the opportunity to talk with recent uh, alumni, and then there'll be time for us to chat with those alumni and for you to ask questions. Thank you so much. So now I'm going to share my screen. So the BFA Design for Performance course trains set and costume designers for stage and screen. Um, who can apply? Well, really anyone who's a passionate visual storyteller who likes to work with fellow artists. And this may include people that are school leavers, have some former arts, architecture, fashion, digital creative industries training, have some experience in the arts profession, like to work together, like to develop ideas together, like to make and build things, like to read, play music, go to galleries, and really in the end, wish to take a significant role in our future national and global arts industry. So I'm going to begin with taking you through year one. So year one is essentially made up of three subjects, practice, techniques, and interdisciplinary collaboration. This will give you a sense of the BFA design studios. This is design one. Uh, in this studio at the moment, there are eight students. They all have their own studio space to create their designs. So the practice subjects explore design development and collaboration. We begin the year with a project called Realism. It's all about research and attention to detail. This is model lighting and Photoshop for the ham funeral. We move into another project um, called stylization. Here's an example of design exploration through drawing, model making and model lighting, model photography and Photoshop for the golden age. Some more examples of the dance of death and model photography. The students were also work on a project called 3D Costume. We we're very fortunate last year to go to Bundan on Trust Estate where the students did hands-on physical tactile research in their creative development for a chameleon costume. And the students perform in this costume they built from recycled materials, also lit and designed the entire presentation. The students also work on a costume design project where we completely focus on costume design. The, here are some examples here. Last year's projects with travesties. This year we're working on the flea in her ear. Here's some examples of design experimentation. A key building block for design is research and analysis. And we look into areas such as design, architecture, fashion, performance, and art. We're incredibly fortunate that in the NIDA building, we have a NIDA costume research collection, which houses over 10,000 objects and garments from the 1820 to the present day. And there's a little film on this on the website if you'd like to take a further look. 
Here are some examples of the students attending a class on costume research. Here's some examples of some slides for our research. This is actually some student work on costume. This is also some examples of um, the art architecture and performance research work that we do here at NIDA. The other main subject, which underpins the practice subjects, and that's actually across both um, year one, two, and three, are techniques. So they're the skills we need to communicate our ideas. So model making, scenic art, art finishing, hand drafting, AutoCAD, drawing and rendering, and digital media. Here's some ex examples. Model making, drawing and rendering, Photoshop and Illustrator, scenic finishes and techniques, breaking down, airbrushing and dyeing for art finishing. Here are some examples of the scenic art space, actually working on productions. And here is the finished product in the theatre. The other main subject is interdisciplinary collaboration, where all the courses come together. So the costume making course, the properties courses, the set, the technical students, the actors, everyone coming together to put on productions. And in the first year, the designers work both as design assistants and they also work backstage on night of productions. And here's some images of some of the work that they do. So there's a really wide variety from helping in the costume department, helping on stage, helping in props, helping in scenic art. Obviously there's some students there mixing blood, working in the night of workshops. Uh, and we put a lot of our productions together through the incredible costume props and set store that we have here at NIDA, which houses over 50,000 objects. And here's an example of the students working backstage. So year two. So year two is more of a studio year. Um, and this year, the, the students really get down to focus on their design work. And they also begin collaboration with the MFA directors. Again, doing subjects, practice techniques and interdisciplinary collaboration. The students were very fortunate this year to attend the Adelaide Festival where they saw around 16 productions from all over the world. This may vary from year to year, but we have done this over the last few years. Um, practice subjects, open text. The year begins with um, a, a play that is open, that can be open in its interpretation. This year's project was The Winter's Tale. And here's some examples of the model making, drafting and costume design work for that project, a number of students. So you can see how the open text can be interpreted in very different ways. The Tempest from previous years and a hybrid costume design where the students completely focus on character and costume and reinterpret, and reinterpret worlds from looking to the contemporary and looking back to the past. This year's project has been Volpone. And here are some examples of the students' work. Last year's project was the Rover. And here are some examples the students' different interpretations of the pieces. We move on in the second half of the year to multi-scene. Here are some examples. Cloud Street, Cloud Nine, and uh, the final uh, really main project where the students are working with the MFA directors again is opera design. This is a uh, project of Carmen by Jeremy Allen. We'll actually be speaking with Jeremy Allen later today. Valcor by Ashlyn King. And again, research and analysis is key as part of practice. Um, and I mentioned before the research collection, but I also would like to point out that a large amount of these objects are also accessible online. So students can go onto the MyNIDA website and they can also access um, you know, a wide um, collection online. 
Here are some examples of the slides. The students also um, research art and architecture in a, in a more interpretive way in the second year. Uh, and the interdisciplinary subjects really focus on screen design. So mise-en-scene, uh, screen design uh, in itself, production design, and art direction, the experience of actually working as an art director on a short film. Here are some examples of the screen design work. Uh, at the moment, the Design 2 students are actually um, filming the opening title sequence for the short film for this year. Here are some examples of the students working as art directors. So the before and after photographs where um, the, these rooms were actually um, seen in two different perspectives, one full of colour and one um, largely a decrepit space. So again, the technique subjects continue and they become more and more sophisticated and they also become more digital. So the first year is, is more hand, more analog, and the students become more and more sophisticated with their digital tools. So model making, model lighting and digital media. Digital drawing, so a large amount of the actual costume work. Um, was being drawn um, by hand in first year and now it's being um, uh, drawn on a digital tablet. Here are some examples of um, ground plans drawn in AutoCAD, some drawing and rendering work. And now we move to third year, the final year, and it's largely a realisation year. While we've been in the studio really focusing on learning how to design and think and collaborate with designers, now in hypothetical projects, now the students are really um, working on projects that are going to be, going to be realised. So um, a set and costume design that will be realised on stage working with directors. And here are some examples. A devised work where students work um, creating the costumes and the staging for cabaret with both the MFA directors and the um, VET students. The, and the year culminates with um, the students designing set and costumes for the Festival of Emerging Artists, again a collaboration with the MFA directors. Here is an example of the first day of rehearsal. So again, all the courses coming together and even some guest artists that have volunteered. This is a first day um, photograph of all the years coming together from last year. And here are some examples of the really diverse work that we work on uh, in the Festival of, of Emerging Artists. So you can really see that we work from Australian work, European work, new work, movement. We even worked on an opera last year and a musical as part of the Festival of Emerging Artists. And um, the again, as I mentioned earlier, the interdisciplinary collaboration subject is a screen project. And here are some examples of the students' uh, screen work. This was um, a project from 2017, um, where the students actually won the After Student Screen Design Award at the APDG Awards. And Carl Johnson, who we'll be speaking to later, was actually part of that team. Here are some photographs of the work. So you can see the wide variety of locations and studio sets that were created by students. In this instance, um, an incredible 3D model um, designed and created by Hamish Elliott and also assisted by Design 3 and Design 2. And we'll be speaking with Hamish later also. So here's some examples of working in the studio and we also work with the MFA directors on a music video. 
um, for the last 10 years, we've had a relationship with Triple J Unearthed. And these, uh, all these videos can also be accessed and seen and watched on the NIDA website. So you can see the diversity of, um, you know, design creations for the different music that's selected for the Triple J music video. Uh, here's an example of Charlotte Montgomery's work and she also won an APDG award for best music video design. So the techniques again become more sophisticated. So AutoCAD, Vectorworks, Rhino, After Effects and uh, drawing for performance. Here are some examples of um, some rendering work um, for the short film. This was a particularly special project this year where we worked with Ev Shepard, who has uh, a significant role in feature films, illustrating pre-visualization in feature films and the students were able to learn from him this year. So Rhino 3D, again, this is some of Carl Johnson's work and we'll be speaking with him later. And this is a pre-visualization, an animated fly-through that was created by one of the students this year in third year of an exhibition. This is utilizing vector works and working out different ca camera views for everybody's scene in the short film. Some construction drawings. And here are some examples of the kind of diverse uh, opportunities students have when they, um, towards the end of the year, they complete a professional um, work placement uh, where students have worked um, both on stage and screen projects, some international, some, some national. Uh, and we really draw on our incredible uh, link to NIDA alumni for these opportunities. Many of these um, projects have happened because the students are actually working with either students that have been out of the business for five or 10 years or even recent graduates help them into the industry. So some of our recent graduates are already out and about doing work. This is uh, Hannah Sitters out on location for Secret Pretty Things. Um, Stephanie Dunlop has doing, been doing 3D models for United Arab Emirates National Day. Um, Kirthi Subramanian, who we'll be speaking with uh, also this morning, um, her work for Groundhog Night um, is being played at the moment on Sydney Film Festival. Uh, Hamish Elliott, who I've mentioned earlier, this is his work for Distorted from 505. And as I mentioned, Kyle, who's working as an art director and event designer, this is some of the examples of his work. We'll also be speaking with Isabel Hudson. Um, and this is some of her, uh, her in incredible stage work that she's been doing around Sydney and Melbourne. And also Jeremy Allen, um, some of his work, uh, some of which we actually saw as part of our performance analysis uh, this year. So, who are our full-time teachers? So there's, there's me. Uh, we also have Stephen Curtis, who has at least 300 productions uh, in his CV, both working in stage and, and screen. And Tobias Stone Feller, Isabel Hudson and Jeremy Allen, also designers with really significant uh, careers. This slide gives you some example of the, the incredible leading industry practitioners we have that come and visit the school, either to take full courses or to give talks or to provide feedback. Um, we're incredibly lucky that we have such a great link to both the screen and stage industry. I'd also really like to acknowledge that you know, NIDA is the leading design for performance course in Australia. And this is backed by 
uh, our alumni's incredible achievements. Notably, Catherine Martin, the, uh, the biggest winner of Academy Awards as an Australian. We also have Michael Wilkinson, uh, an Academy Award nominee. Uh, Kim Barrett, who has uh, an incredible stage and screen career internationally. Uh, Deborah Riley, who's, an, who's been the production design uh, on Game of Thrones series and is a BAFTA Award winner. Fiona Crombie, uh, a wonderful production designer and also has a stage career. Um, notably a BAFTA Award winner for The Favourite, but also amazing work on Snowtown and Macbeth and many others. Um, Dale Ferguson, a Tony Award nominee for Exit the King on Broadway. Uh, Alice Babbage, a more recent uh, NIDA graduate, uh, has a very significant international career across Berlin, London and New York. And Charles Davis, uh, doing a lot of work um, around Australia in particular, and particularly Sydney Theatre Company. Uh, so that's the end of uh, my talk. Um, and I'll be talking to the uh, alumni now, but just a reminder that you can uh, ask me any further questions at my email address listed here. And also you can contact Rebecca Parling as well. So I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen now. And I'm going to invite um, my NIDA alumni to turn on their cameras and their screens and their mics. And I am going to introduce them um, by uh, reading out their CVs. So, Firstly, I'd like to introduce Isabel Hudson. Isabel's work includes set design for Torch for Place, Melbourne Theatre Company, Young Frankenstein, Hayes Theatre, design for Edward the Emu, Monkey Bar. Isabel won Sydney Theatre Awards for Best Set Design of an Independent Production in both 2019 and 2018 for her set designs on the smash hit sold out musical American Psycho and Cry Baby at Hayes Theatre. She also received Sydney Theatre nominations for Best Set Design of an Independent Production for the musical The View Upstairs for Hayes Theatre Company and for Dry Land, Outhouse Theatre Co. Outhouse Theatre Co. and the 2018 Best Independent Production. Isabel is also a lecturer of design at NIDA. Welcome, Isabel. So now, Jeremy Allen. Jeremy Allen is a graduate from 2015. He's a freelance stage designer based in Sydney and a graduate of the NIDA design course and a Bachelor of Architectural Studies at the University of South Australia. His most recent work includes the design of the set and costumes for Sydney Theatre Company and National Theatre of Parramatta's White Pearl, the rise and disguise of Elizabeth R at the Hayes Theatre earlier this year and Small Mouth Sounds at the Darlinghurst Theatre Company. He also designed for Sydney Theatre, nominated Angels in America at the Old Fitz, John and Gloria without House Theatre and the 2018 Best Independent Production. Jeremy is also a lecturer of design at NIDA. Welcome, Jeremy. Carl Johnson. Um, Carl graduated in 2017 and works as an art director and designer for events including fashion, festival, runways, car launches, conferencing, retail design and cosmetic beauty labs. He has worked for brands such as YSL, Clinique, Porsche, Audi, Dyson, The Iconic, Melbourne Fashion Festival, Fashion Week Australia and Mecca Comp cosmetics, as well as vast array of corporate and private clientele, which seen him as travel internationally to the US and Vietnam. He also is a co-winner of the APDG student screen design, which I mentioned earlier. Welcome, Kyle. So, Keithy, I'd like to welcome Keithy Subramaniam, graduate from 2019. And in Keithy's final year, she worked as set costume designer on the theatre shows, including House at Boundary Road and Flora, 
designed for a collaborative short film titled Alienated and co-designed a music video for Blue Velvet as part of Triple J's Unearth. She also worked on AB series, new series, Operation Buffalo as part of her industry placement. In 2020, Kithy has worked as production designer on Groundhog Day, which I mentioned earlier, uh, which is now playing at the Sydney Festival and designed a music video, Quiet Australian. And later this uh, year, which is fantastic news, Kathy will be assisting both the set and costume designers on Young Frankenstein as part of Hayes Theatre Company's new vocational prog program for emerging designers. Welcome, Kathy. And lastly, Hamish Elliott, graduate from 2019, is the production costume designer for Stage and Screen. Uh, during his final year, Hamish worked as costume designer for Joseph K at Limelight Theatre, set and costume designer for Miracle City as part of NIDA's Festival of Emerging Artists and production designer on the music video The Butcher's Wife by Yi Lin in collaboration with Triple J Unearthed. Since finishing NIDA, Hamish has worked on multiple short films and music videos, including How Things Are Born, which premiered at Flickerfest earlier this year. He's also worked as production designer as Disordered, a work I showed you earlier, and set builder for the visitors at Carriage Works as part of Sydney Festival, and his work with Queer Screen for Mardi Gras earned him the Frank Wells Volunteer of the Year Award. Welcome, Hamish. Great. So let's just check. Have we got all our mics on? Our special guests, yes, fantastic. So I might begin with um, you, Izzy, if that's okay. If you could um, describe your experience of the BFA course and what what some of the highlights have been. Obviously, you've been teaching as well, so you've got a bit of a, you know, you've got a, two perspectives really, being the um, student and being the teacher. I'd love to hear your perspective. Um, well, in my experience of NIDA, I came from a background where I didn't have done any art or really from an English type of background and text-based. Um, so coming to NIDA was really a big um, shift in sort of everything of my life, actually, but gave me a huge kind of support for the skills to lead me into the industry. So, and also a huge connection and network of people to draw on and foster that type of collaboration. So even here on the panel, like Keith is assisting me later this year and you have already that <laughs> type yeah. of shorthand and also connection and, and type of training. So you can also tap into each other's learning, which is great. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. And I might ask you, um, Jeremy, as well, if you could speak into that. Yeah, um, uh, I actually came from a background in architecture, as you may have heard. So I'm originally from Adelaide and I did a degree there in architecture. Um, I kind of did it, one, to appease my parents and two, <laughs> to, to kind of be the basis um, in, in uh, a lot of the technologies that we use in set design. So things like AutoCAD and that kind of thing. Um, so I kind of came into NIDA um, with some of those skills already. But then for me, NIDA was an experience and you, you may know the architectural methodologies between, for, for kind of these, these um, techniques that we use. Um, but doing a set design particularly is is very different. There are a lot of different um, programs that we use and uh, there are various different um, methods that we use uh, in design um, to, to present set designs. And then costume design was a completely new thing for me and I kind of fell in love with that over this mm. sophomore three year, mm -hmm. three year BFA. Um, so yeah. Great, thank you. Um, Kyle, I actually joined uh, NIDA in this role when you were in third year. And what I particularly noted um, was uh, what seemed to be incredible teamwork in your um, particular year, um, great collaborations, and you achieved an enormous amount. I'm wondering if you could, could not only speak about some of the skills that um, you learnt at NIDA, but also just speak about collaborations across NIDA also. Yeah, for sure. I mean, NIDA is kind of a special place in that, you know, the class sizes, there's only you and kind of seven of your friends. So you get that really nice concentrated level of learning when there's so much 
one-on-one -on -one with the lecturers. Like I talked to a lot of my friends who, you know, went to, I guess you would call a normal university and, you know, they don't know their lecturer by name or anything, which to me was kind of baffling because it's it's one-on-one uh, -on -one at NIDA. Um, and yeah, the best part is not only do you, you know, spend so much time with these, this close network of your peers, but also the other courses and you get a lot of, you get a lot of um, knowledge and learning out of people like the directors or the costume makers or the actors. And, you know, I guess, it's not just you in this isolated design bubble. It's you're also speaking to the other the other um, practitioners there as well. Um, and yeah, definitely you get a you get a whole lot of skills there. It's three years of like very concentrated learning. So day to day, I'm always using what I learned at night. of set design, obviously, something that I do you know every day using the more technical digital things like uh, rendering and all of that stuff. But also, I think the biggest thing that you get out maybe is just communicating design, you know, an idea is only as good as you can sell it. And I guess I probably work in a little bit more of a corporate sector now, so I'm constantly mm. going to sell an idea and not definitely give me the skills to do that. So. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Kyle. And, and Kathy, you've only been a short while out, but you've been incredibly busy and there will be a lot of things that I would imagine you'd be looking back and I'm hoping you'd be thinking, oh, I know how to do this. So I've got the confidence to do this. I'd love to hear about what the last few months has been like for you and um, and what skills you've been particularly drawing on from your NIDA experience. Yeah, the last few months have been incredible because I have been able to work as much as I have been because of the connections that I got to make at NIDA. Because any project that you're working on, you have, you're always with like a different team of people and with all from different departments. And those connections continue on after NIDA. And I think the most sort of important skill that for me I learned um, was like Kyle mentioned, like how to collaborate with people because you're working with so many departments and each of them have their own sort of language and their own sort of way of doing things that it's like a real skill to know how to navigate that and to know how to communicate your design effectively. Mm -hmm. Great. You also um, were an international student for three years as, as well. So coming to NIDA actually relatively young, I think, and um, I watched you definitely grow in confidence over those years. Can you pinpoint anything about um, how that kind of, what drew you to NIDA internationally and then also um, the support network that you found when you actually got to NIDA? Um, I I knew I wanted to work in film and theater and I love the visual sort of world of um, filmmaking and theater. So I looked up the top 10 design schools in the world and uh, NIDA was one of them. And I wanted to do both set and costume design and NIDA was the only one that offered that in one course. Mm -hmm. um, and after looking at all of the alumni that have graduated from NIDA and the work that they've done and the uh, the range of skills that NIDA offers, um, my decision was so easy. Um, and coming here, um, obviously it's like a completely different environment and you, it's it's this whole other space, um, but the sort of like support system that I had at NIDA was incredible. Even from like my classmates to like the design tutors to like every other department, they've been so supportive of everything. And so if I ever felt like I needed any sort of help, I could easily go to any one of them and, and knew I was in like safe hands. Mm -hmm. so really it's great. Good. Well, it's look, it's been wonderful to see you branching out into the industry so successfully. It's just, it's great. It's great for us um, <laughs> to see that happen. Um, so over to you, uh, Hamish. Uh, you actually had done, I'd be interested in you also talking about your prior training and then what you gained from the course once you came to NIDA. Yeah, so before NIDA, I went to TAFE um, for a year and a half and I kind of started there um, just doing, it was called Design Fundamentals, a, cert a certificate three, because I kind of thought I was going to go into graphic design, but then they kind of had all these different areas of focus, including production design, which is kind of what I really fell in, in love with. Um, and then, you know, obviously looked at, at NIDA as being the next place to go to kind of develop on, on that. And I was similar in, in what kind of Jeremy said, I kind of came to NIDA with um, 
kind of a, more of a focus on being a set designer and kind of really, you know, from doing set and costume found that I really love to kind of create um, a show or, you know, something like totally do, you know, do both, both parts. So I think that, you know, Tate gave me a good um, kind of starting block, but I feel like through NIDA, the amount of technical skills that I do, like developed just from, you know, the range of different projects we did was quite um, extraordinary. Mm, fantastic. Um, I'm very interested to know, um, we will be moving to um, chat with our attendees in a minute, but I'd be really interested in knowing from each one of you, um, what advice you would offer um, somebody actually considering this course? You've been through it, some more recently than, than others, um, particularly how you get the most out of uh, the experience uh, in particular. So Izzy, I might move over to you and ask you first. Um, well, my advice to someone wanting to come to NIDA is also to start participating in the industry. So to start when we can go back to the theatre and um, enjoy it, but also start to engage with the visual language that design can offer and just keep immersing yourself in it every day. Because that's what NIDA also gives you that context of practicing your creativity every day. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, great. Thank you. And Jeremy, your thoughts? Yeah, um, I would say prepare for the long haul. Um, it's a long <laughs> It does feel like a long three years, but it's every, every minute is worth it. Um, it's so valuable. I would say exactly what Izzy just said in that in order to kind of make an, to kind of get an understanding of the, the theatre scene, particularly in Sydney and as, as well as the kind of film scene here as well, um, expose yourself to art. Um, there are lots of opportunities, particularly now that galleries are opening up here and around the country, um, expose yourself to art and get an understanding of how art works and how art operates. Because, um, that's what we use a lot in, in theatre and in design. So it's kind of worth kind of seeing as much as you can. Um, and yeah, especially with all the online content that's around at the moment, mm. particularly international shows. Um, it's really exciting. And it's actually a really good opportunity at the moment to see a lot of international work that you otherwise wouldn't be able to see. Or mm. you'd be able to see. Mm. So um, mm. I would be recommending you to kind of get online and watch as much as you can, get an understanding of different theatre and all that kind of thing. And then, yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Thank you. And Kyle, your thoughts? Um, yeah. Just, I would probably begin by asking myself, like, am I passionate about theatre and film or just like design and the storytelling through a visual language? Because it's probably the passion that you're going to need, you know, as you go through and you navigate the three years, because it is, it's not like a normal like, uni course. You, you're there five days a week, you know, nine to six. It's, it's, um, it's an intense learning environment, but it's your passion that's going to get you through and, you know, sharing that experience with other people who are like-minded. Um, mm. So I guess kind of ask yourself, are you passionate about it? And that will probably be the first step, I would say. Mm, definitely. And Kithi, your thoughts? Um, I think any sort of creative going into an environment where you're sort of showcasing your creative capabilities, it's very easy to get caught up in your in showcasing your own sort of artistic style and how you present yourself as a designer, that you can put a skill learning secondary. And I think it's so important to like prioritize learning as much as possible from all sorts of things, especially in your first year. And then the sort of your own artistic style comes through it. And I would also say, like Jeremy and Izzy said, to be as pro proactive as possible. Thank you. And Hamish, your thoughts? Um, yeah, I really have to kind of agree with Kyle. I think the number one thing you need is to like be passionate and be willing to kind of throw yourself in. Like I found that um, the technical skills side of things is something that's really taught and something that you can learn and pick up along the way. Um, but I think you have to have the, that drive that kind of, you know, makes you want to do the work because, it, you know, it is quite demanding. Um, so if you're going to be spending all this time, you want to make sure that you're passionate about it. Mm. My perspective is certainly that uh, NIDA design graduates end up being incredibly flexible creative artists. They're really willing to change things up quite quickly. And I think it's a, it's a skill that the industry absolutely demands, uh, that change needs to happen to make productions better. Um, to, you know, today's talk has largely been 
focusing on the design aspects, but there's also um, within the, uh, the first and second year, there's also common subjects that the students do. They do collaborations with other uh, courses and create work, and they also do, uh, learn about different kinds of um, performance styles as well, um, as well as there is some, some written work too. So we can also, when we actually move to uh, inviting our guests uh, to ask questions, we can probably also speak to that, to flesh that out. Um, All right, so I can see we have a few people attending. Uh, so I would love some questions. So you can either um, turn your camera and mic on. You can write in the chat that you would like to talk or you can also, there's a little hand button where you can put your hand button up and we can see that you've got a question. Uh, and I have uh, somebody standing by who will actually turn your mic on. So I'm hoping that some people will have some questions for us. And I'm very happy if I can't see the hands that somebody points out if I'm missing somebody who, who's wanting to ask a question. We can't possibly have covered everything. There must be some pressing things that you would also like to know. Don't be shy. Danielle, we'll turn your camera on and we'll turn your mic on. Hi, nice to see you. What Thank can we you help so you much. with today? Um, I just had a question about um, how you guys manage financially. Did you guys save up for the course or, um, yeah, because I've studied full time already and I did dance and that was a lot different because we didn't do as much written work, but it was really full on because we were able to work, but I don't know what you guys did. So, yeah. Who wants to answer that? I can. <laughs> See? I can give my, just my experience. So I, um, I had a similar thing where I did a degree beforehand mm -hmm. and um, I worked one day a week as well, um, all the way through NIDA on a Sunday. Um, I was lucky to have that kind of casual job to help me and then also was on um, a student benefit from the government. So that was my, that was like, that was my kind of financial bit through NIDA, but it is, I would say, challenging to work, you know, every day, every day or anything, because the class time is kind of from nine to six, five days. So it's more like weekend casual jobs. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know what my, my situation was also the same in that I actually worked at NIDA as well on the weekends. So I would work there and, you know, that's, I guess, a benefit is that that opportunity is there open to you. They have what's called NIDA open courses and you can work as like an assistant on that. And yet also, you know, youth allowance went a long way to help. <laughs> that's handy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have anything different that they did that they wanted to share? Um, yeah, I'll say I, I was working um, as a model maker, which was something that I could do in kind of my own time. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can find um, something that is, you know, technically a part time job, but you get to set the own, your own hours for it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think I would have had the kind of flexibility to work the same shift every week. Um, but you know, I could find a certain amount of hours in the week to, you know, do something to make money. Cool. That's, that is, <laughs> that's something that Izzy and I did as well, is that we both made model made for um, designers in our second and third year. Um, and it's just kind of, an, it, it feels nice to be able to use your skills that you've been learning for the past two or three years and actually working in the industry, building these beautiful models that then get displayed by these designers. So it's kind of a good way to kind of get a shoe in and get contacts into the industry as well. Um, so there are skills that you'll learn, particularly with drafting as well, like CAD drafting and that kind of thing. Um, there are often designers who are working very busily in the industry and they need an assistant to come in and um, do drafting or model making, exactly what Hamish was saying. So um, that's a kind of really useful kind of way to get into, um, uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank yeah. You so much. I, um... 
I think what's also good about that is that you learn from other practitioners that aren't just the teachers as well, which is so there's kind of a, you're being paid, but also there's a kind of double learning going on. And if I can also just point out some students, and certainly I did when I was a student, which was a long time ago, I worked the entire Christmas holidays and I used to really go for it. Yeah, right. And I would really put uh, away money in that, in that, in that time, yeah. um, which would just give me this kind of backup buffer each each year. And there's certainly people who do that, who do some serious hours in the holidays, but it still feels like a holiday because you don't have any homework. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if it was worth um, taking kind of a year off and just working heaps and saving and then committing to the next year. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard to know, I think. Yeah, it um, is. <laughs> I think uh, if are you in Sydney? I'm in Melbourne. Okay. Well, if you happen to come up to Sydney to see some shows yeah. um, is good to get a sense of, you know, you can kind of see the workload by actually seeing the shows. Yeah. And also you kind of know what you're committing to then as well. Yeah. You know, I think that really helps. You've seen what you're likely to do. Um, physically I mean we're showing you a lot of images um, which really will give you a great sense of it but I think actually being in the building if you've ever got the opportunity and we're also very happy if you contact us ahead of time to take you on a little bit of a tour okay cool thank okay. you Thank you so much that's all right uh, anybody else have a question pop their hand up oh yes is it Brielle Yes, it's Brielle. Great. Um, we might get you to turn your camera on as well if we yeah, can, sure. so we can see you. Hi, Brielle. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, I was wondering if students are expected to already have skills and things like AutoCAD and the more digital side of design things before starting the course. It's such a mixture. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, at the moment we have eight students in first year and I think three of them have come straight from school and which means they have school school level skills but it's amazing in terms of our process how quickly everybody kind of levels out um so yes you're it's you know you probably start off with a bit little bit of an, an advantage but people motivated people catch up really quickly so we look we really look into how much people kind of understand about the industry they're wanting to get into, how motivated they are. Definitely we try and get a sense of how flexible people are going to be. So are they going to listen to the advice that are given and, and, is, uh, and respond to it? And we try and tease that out in, in the interview. So we always encourage people to apply because even if you don't get in in the first year, the actual experience of going through the interview and getting feedback can help you the next time as, as well. And we, I always make sure that I let that person know how they went and what to work on for next. So it's definitely a useful thing to do and not to be concerned about anybody else, just be concerned about yourself. That would be my advice um would any of the alumni like to add anything um about that well um uh i when i came to nida i had zero skills like to be honest so i didn't even know how to read a scale ruler i remember that very clearly <laughs> so um i'm an example of those people <laughs> I knew how to I knew how to read a book that was really <laughs> my skill set and um, so in my first year I spent a lot of time devoted to those um, the techniques in terms of communicating my ideas so and um, that was what also was such a great experience because in my particular class we had lots of different levels of abilities so I could not only learn from the amazing staff that were there but also from my colleagues who also in the type of environment you are in where you're with them every day you know it helps you push it like pushes you into different areas as well because that they're, they're also your amazing teachers at the same time mm. I really? was probably 
I was a little bit different to Izzy in that I, I came in with a little bit of modeling and stuff. I had done a little bit of architecture and I actually did graphics all through high school where we learned CAD as a, as a skill. The good thing about NIDA is it's flexible enough in that because I was interested in that, I was able to apply it in, in various projects where maybe it didn't even call for it. So it's something like an expo, I would modeled the whole thing just because it was something that I was interested in, but it was only because I was interested in you, you put the, you put the time in. So I think people are daunted by the digital aspect of things, but it's like anything. It's a skill that you learn over time. You know, if I work digitally every day now. If I look back a year ago at my digital work, I'm like, oh, that's, you know, I don't want to show anyone that. So it's like, it's just a skill. You might be good and you might not be, but don't let that be the be all end all if you want to apply because it can be learned. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is remarkable when I look at the work, you know, I'm looking at the current third years about to graduate and, you know, the skills base they have now um, in terms of we do have a bit more focus now on Vectorworks as well is really quite remarkable. Um, Brielle, do you have any more questions we can help you with? I was wondering as well, do you focus at all on lighting design? For we, we do have aspects of it. Um, it. It's included within it and it's discussed and it's considered, um, but it is a very, it's a small component in comparison to set and costume. We really are training set and costume designers who have an understanding of what lighting can bring to their project. That's the main thing. The lighting design aspect more technically exists within the technical um, course. And in that course, they cover stage management, sound design and lighting design. As, as particular large chunks, as well as some production management also. So it's more managerial and more technical. And we're, uh, we're very much around creating ideas and realizing those ideas visually. Okay, cool, thank you. It's all right. Anybody else have any questions? We've still got a few minutes. Thing is I can't I don't want to leave anybody out that might have a question what I will point out is that 11 15 there's actually a live Q&A if anybody does um, find that they have some more questions later I'll be attending that live Q&A and you can ask me further things and then also you can contact me as I mentioned before on julie.lynch at nida.edu Dot au should anything else um, come up along the way. Uh, in particular, you might find something out in a couple of months that you'd really like to know, or you might like to pop in and you're very, very welcome to pop in. We can try and uh, make time for you and take you around the NIDA building. So I might do one more last call for questions. Is there anything that the alumni, any final words of advice from the alumni that you would like to, to share to prospective people considering the course? It doesn't have to be, it's just that there was something pressing. I think we've covered things quite well today. I would encourage you to look at the schedule and also look to uh, learn about the common research subjects as well. That'll give you a really good idea of the complete course. Really utilize the website and look at things in the website also. Um, there's a wonderful making of a short film, um, almost like a mini doco that's on the BFA page at the moment that you can see will give you a really good idea of the hands-on experience of making the short film. And there's also a really wonderful um, compilation of all the uh, Festival of Emerging Artist projects that's been put together as well, which will give you a sense of the work that goes on in the background um, for BFA 3. 
Okay. Well, if there's no further questions, um, I can't see any more hands. I'd just really like to thank you all for attending and particularly thank the wonderful BFA uh, alumni and also um, uh, who, who, who come in at various times as well and help and teach. Thank you so much for your time this morning also. So I will now close the talk and I may see some of you at the Q&A. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs>